The Capital Connection is a production of WAMC Northeast Public Radio. David Gustina is the producer of The Capital Connection. Support comes from United University Professions, representing 37,000 academic and professional employees at SUNY campuses and teaching hospitals across New York State. Frederick E. Cole, President, UUPinfo.org. It's the Capital Connection. Hi, I'm Alan Chartok. Joining us this week is an old friend, Jay Jacobs, chair of the New York State Democratic Committee. You can find out more about Jay at nydems.org. Welcome, Jay. Well, thanks for having me. Well, you've made the news this week, all right. And it's fascinating to me because I have been predicting that Andrew Cuomo, based on previous forays, like running against Carl McCall at the last minute when he had the chance for the nomination, might come in and in a split primary might very well win. And basically, if I'm reading this right, you came out this week, endorsed Kathy Hochul and said to Cuomo through the airways, you better not. Am I wrong about that? Uh, No, you have it exactly right. My concern is certainly that he would consider doing that. I I just don't think that's appropriate, you know, given the circumstances that we're, uh, we're in, given you know, where we've been, uh, and and the fact, frankly, that Kathy Hochul has done an outstanding job, and uh, nobody has disputed that portion of it. You know, she, you know, hit the ground running and, um, you know, has, has really done some, some great work, and, and I think she's earned our support. So I felt it was important to let all candidates, including, you know, our former governor, know where my support was. So that, of course, is interesting in that You are really one of his closest allies. I've interviewed you on the show before. You certainly came out strongly for Cuomo. It's all changed now because of the accusations, you think? Well, you know, I I think you you say it correctly. I was one of his strongest allies. I I was the the state chair under um, Governor Patterson first, then Governor Cuomo. Governor Cuomo wanted a new state chair at at a point, and, and I moved on. And then, you know, he came back to me and asked me to do it again. And I've always been, um, from the get-go, uh, focused on my main loyalty, which is to, to the state Democratic Party. And when that was, uh, when supporting Governor Cuomo was in the interest of the state party, uh, I was there. And I'm proud of that. And I think the governor, Governor Cuomo, did an awful lot of good for the state of New York. And we've got just made tremendous advances under Governor Cuomo. That being said, you know, circumstances changed with the accusations and the attorney general's report, a whole host of things that, you know, we've seen over the summer. And I felt it was appropriate for the governor to move on. And I told him so. I've always been straight up. I've always tried to be as honest as possible. Sometimes people don't like you know, what I have to say, but I, I feel I have to say it, and that's how I've carried myself. So now my belief is that the best person to lead the state of New York at this time is Kathy Hochul, and that's who I'll be supporting. So let me ask you this. When you spoke to him, what was that like? Well, you know, we, we've had a couple of conversations since he's left office. The first was unpleasant because he didn't like, you know, the way I had come out against him. Subsequently, in a conversation or two, you know, he's voiced his objection to the details of the attorney general's report. And then when I called him um, the morning that I was endorsing uh, Kathy Hochul, it was a fairly short conversation. Uh, I was just doing it as a courtesy. I I called quite a number of elected officials and other interested uh, individuals to give them a heads up so they don't read it in the newspaper. That's a courtesy. Uh, It's something that, that I do. I think it's appropriate. And um, he he was pretty much, again, going off on the attorney general's report. But as I said, a short conversation. Uh, He appreciated that I called him, let him know, and that was that. Well, I've been saying for days, weeks, that he would come in. If a number of people run in that primary, an awful lot of people know Cuomo. I get letters about people who like him. And one would think that he might have a real chance for getting the nomination. Would that be a disaster for the Democratic Party? Well, I think it would open an opportunity for a a Republican challenge. I think that the Republicans have a very tough time winning uh, the governorship in New York State. That doesn't mean it's impossible. I don't want anybody to, you know, be under the 
the illusion that it can't happen, but the odds are against them. Uh, the odds improve, however, if they're running against Andrew Cuomo, and you can muck up the entire argument and discussion in an election over you know what he has done as it relates to these allegations, or the nursing home issue, or the book, or other things that have really nothing to do with the sum and substance of improving people's lives in the state of New York. If we're on that argument, we win. If we're on these distracting arguments, well, you know, it's a little bit tougher. Well, now with the guy that they're all lining up behind the Republican, who is an out-and-out Trumper. Yeah, well, Lee Zeldin is a a far-right zealot. He's a Trump supporter. I think he's an embarrassment, frankly. He he barely wins his own district, uh, the first congressional district out in Suffolk County. And so I I think that he's a flawed candidate. I think that he's not qualified to represent as governor the people of the entire state of New York, who are far more moderate than the, the views that he's represented. And I think in comparison, if he's running against Kathy Hochul, it's a slam dunk and Democrats win big. So, you know, that's why I think Kathy Hochul will be a great candidate for governor. Now, you did mention the attorney general, and it was the attorney general who brought Andrew Cuomo down. There are many people who think her work has been outstanding and she should be the candidate just because she didn't happen to be lieutenant governor at the time. How do you answer them? Well, I I agree. Look, let's remember, let's go back in history a little bit. Um, I was instrumental in talking Andrew Cuomo, the governor, into supporting Tish James for attorney general. Tish James right. wanted to be the attorney general. There were numbers of candidates who wanted that uh, that role. I was the state chair. Then I was instrumental as as the uh, chair of the party, uh, and she wanted me to do this, uh, in rounding up the votes at the state committee to get her to be our designee. And, of course, I was helpful. I wouldn't say instrumental. That would overstate it. But I was helpful with uh, her in um, bringing home a, a primary victory that you know gave her the nomination and then uh, allowed her uh, to become the attorney general. So what, what I, I'm saying is that I've been a big supporter of Tish James. I think she has done a great job as the attorney general. And, and I, I'd like her to stay as the attorney general. The fact is uh, you have a governor. Uh, and she's a great governor. She's proven herself at this point, and I think she'll be a great governor. So why change? Because somebody wants it, and I'm not just referring to Tish James. Ambition drives a lot of people. Ambition is not a bad thing. But you Including have Hochul. Of course. Also. Abraham Lincoln had great ambition. You know, so, it's, yeah. again, it's, it's not, uh, I'm not characterizing it as an evil thing or a bad thing. Right. It's just it's a necessary component in political life. Yet, you have to uh, be measured about it and weigh uh, you know, the impact on the full state party. I think a multi-candidate primary at this time, going into particularly this year, 2022, is going to have the potential of sapping our resources and weakening the party at a time we need to be at our strongest. You know, you'll, you'll remember um, the first uh, midterm elections of any new president tend to go poorly for the incumbent party. So you remember 1994 for Bill Clinton was not a good year for Democrats, and 2010 under uh, Barack Obama was a horrible year for Democrats. And and Republicans, by the way, you know, George Bush didn't do too well in his first midterm, and certainly Donald Trump didn't. So, you know, it's a tough, tough uh, political cycle year to be playing games with these kinds of primaries, unnecessarily. And I think they're unnecessary right now with a, a, an incumbent governor who's doing the job and I think uh, represents the moderate and progressive view of most New Yorkers. Now, the New York Post, that distinguished journal, now says Andrew Cuomo aides told Kathy Hogel she was off in 2022, the ticket before the scandals. What do you know about that? And I'll bet you do know something. Well, I don't know about those specific conversations. I do know that even uh, in the last go around uh, in in 2018, there was that kind of talk. I I had uh, made my voice known that I thought that was a bad idea. That Kathy Hochul had been a very loyal, hardworking lieutenant governor. She'd been traveling the state, going everywhere that she was asked, did what she was supposed to. I thought it would have been unfair. I wasn't privy to the January uh, conversation that I see reported in the Post. It doesn't surprise me. Um, I, I had said to Kathy 
uh, excuse me, it was now Governor uh, Hochul, I had said to her when she was lieutenant governor uh, a few months before uh, the uh, uh, everything you know, came out uh, about Governor Cuomo, I had said to her that I favored her to stay on as lieutenant governor. I thought that she's doing a great job, and, and, and I would advocate for that. I always felt that, you know, she was really a hardworking lieutenant governor. She helped lots of Democrats across the state. Anybody that asked her to show up, she was there. Every county dinner that she was invited to, she spoke. She helped the county organizations raise money, helped candidates raise money, and then stood out, you know, in cold weather situations, shaking hands with voters, standing next to candidates, running for office. Uh, you know, you can't ask for much more than that. And loyalty, in, in my view, is a very important part of, of politics. Unfortunately, it, it's a, a scarce commodity with some, not with me. She earned it, uh, and I think that Taking her off the ticket would have been a bad move. And now look at how the world turns. She's the governor, and frankly, she's doing a great job. And she can't be all that happy with Andrew Cuomo if these reports are true, right, and that he wanted her out of there. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm speaking out of school, but I don't think the two of them have ever been that happy with each other. So, you know, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just the way it is. And I think we are where we are. And again, she's just doing a great job. So I, I think it's given the loyalty and what she's done for the party generally, we should stand behind her. Jay Jacobs, this is also very interesting. If Andrew Cuomo enters the primary, what is your thinking about his chances, name recognition, a lot of people still like him, of his winning? I think that, unfortunately, the primary will become a slugfest between the attorney general, if she were to enter the primary, and the former governor. And there'll be vitriol and all sorts of nastiness spewing back and forth. It'll be distracting. Um, uh, in terms of you know what the real issues are for real voters, real people in the state of New York. I think that he'll start out with very high poll numbers comparatively. He'll probably be in the uh, um, low to mid-30s just because of his name recognition. In fact, people still, you know, remember what he's done and appreciate the the progress that he gave to New York. But uh, after a campaign where a lot of people are spending a lot of money, uh, I wouldn't want to predict what the outcome of that's going to be. Remember, in New York state primaries, 58% of the vote comes from women. So that's a starter that people ought to know. Secondly, between 52 and 55% of the vote comes from the city of New York. Um, about 20% from the suburbs, about 30% from upstate. So different candidates are going to be pulling from different geographic regions, different demographic regions, and it, it's going to be uh, anybody's guess as to how it turns out. Uh, he, he's got 16 to $18 million in a campaign war chest. And my view is I respect the job that he did. I think it's unfortunate you know, uh, how it all turned out and, and uh, what uh, he managed to get himself into uh, at the end. But I, I try to maintain good relations with everybody, and I will do everything that I can to, to, to dissuade him from making that kind of a run. So I take it that if he wins and if he becomes the governor again, you would not be the chair of the Democratic Party? I would not stand for chair of the Democratic Party again under Governor Cuomo, no. No, that would be my choice. Word has come in that Zephyr Teachout is interested in running for the AG position. Should Tish James run for governor, would you support her candidacy? Well, first of all, I, I've never met Zephyr Teachout, so I don't know her. Um, I, I understand she's not only formidable and talented, but she's you know, uh, quite, quite capable. Um, I, I think that some of her views are further to the left than, than I usually go with, but I'd be happy to talk with her. I don't want to discount anything. Um, before I meet somebody, I don't like to cast a, a judgment. Too many people in politics, by the way, you know, they have no idea who I am. They never met me, but they've got a judgment. They, they know all about me. And oh, sure, because they, you know, they read a newspaper, or they see a quote, or worse yet, they read Twitter. But you know, I like to meet people. I like to get to know them. I like to understand where they're coming from before I make a judgment about them. So I don't think it would be right for me to determine one way or the other whether or not I'd support her. Are other people besides the gubernatorial candidates, because there might be a major shift in the positioning here, coming to you, Jay Jacobs, and asking for your support? Well, I mean, I, I am talking to different people. I don't want to you know, go into detail. I feel it's important to reach out. Ah, come on. Uh, <laughs> I, I think it's important to reach out and talk to folks. But I think that most people um, that are 
positioning to run or are making their preliminary moves, and I suspect I'll hear from more as, as the calendar moves forward. Okay. COVID-19 mandates in New York. Uh, do you agree with them? They seem to be working. Yeah, I agree with them. I, look, it, it takes a bit of courage for a new governor to make a move like the one she's made. That impressed me. You know, you can you can uh, hang around the, the tip of the fence and, and hope for the best, hedging your bets. Um, I, I, I've never been one that, that believed that successful uh, politics is um, one that lacks courage. You have to have courage. And let's face it, you know, this whole COVID thing has become politicized nonsensically. I think it's stupid. I think that, you know, you have states that are against the, the vaccine mandates that have the highest uh, requirements for vaccine for a whole host of other um, uh, illnesses like polio and the rest. Look at Mississippi. It's nonsensical. This is this is about the Trump era. And by the way, Donald Trump got his vaccine, got his vaccination and, and his supporters, you know, are all about not having to get it. And, and people are getting sick and they're dying. And, and so this is serious business. So Kathy Hochul standing up right out of the gate and saying, hey, no, let's go to the science Put a mask on where you need masks uh, in the schools or otherwise, happy or unhappy. We're going to keep people healthy. We're going to keep people safe and keep people from dying. I'm sorry. That's the responsible thing to do. And all the other stuff, in my judgment, craziness. I want to go back to the governorship for a minute. If Tish James turns out to be the candidate and you're the chairman right now, you've already said you might not stand if Hochul was not the candidate but is there a possibility you might change your mind? Uh, an awful lot of people are impressed with her. She's very impressive. There's no, there's no argument that Tish James is anything but impressive. And and um, uh, you know I, I'm always uh, impressed when I when I see her and hear her speak. No question about it. You know I I I would I would have to say to you that barring some you know major change or or, or enormous stumble or disagreement. Um, with Governor Hochul, uh, um, which I would say in anybody's case, and that, that's not something that's not normal. I mean, you would expect that from anyone. Um, I, I, I don't envision any reason that I would change you know, an endorsement. Um, I'm not prone to changing endorsements. I don't get wobbly. Uh, so, you know, I'm sticking with Governor Hochul. Again, I think she's the best candidate, as impressive as I think that uh, Tish James is, and I, I do, and as much as I like her and I do and admire her, uh, I believe our current governor is doing the job, can do a great job, and has earned our support. Remember this, and, and I stressed this in my statement when I gave her support. I'm a county chair in Nassau. Now 20 years this month, uh, I've been county chair in Nassau. I have never seen a statewide official spend as much time, not just in my county, and I've seen it firsthand multiple times, but across the entire state, selflessly just going out and campaigning for other Democrats, helping recruit other Democrats for local races that have no impact on her, and raising money for county committees and Democratic candidates throughout the state with as much consistency as Kathy Hochul. So yeah, as but a county still, chair, but, she's earned but, that. Yeah, but still, Jay Jacobs, chairman of the state Democratic Party, in case people are just joining us, there are those people who think she's from upstate New York. She is not from New York City, where the Democratic voters are. She's a more than competent speaker, but Tish James is, of course, of color herself. She comes from New York City. I would think Tish James could offer a very formidable candidacy. And she's a terrific speaker, by the way. Right. I, I agree with all of those things, except the the premise that if you're from upstate New York, you, you don't represent the views of downstate, I think is, you know, last century uh, mentality. Mm. I believe that, you know, voters are more interested in uh, electing someone who's empathetic, understanding, will listen and knows how to lead and and run a government. All of those things, I believe Kathy Hochul has demonstrated. And uh, knowing her, and I know her personally, remember, I knew her when she was the uh, county clerk in Erie County 
uh, way back in 2009, my first go around as state chair. And I was impressed with her then. I didn't always agree with everything that you know she espoused, and she became a candidate for Congress. I supported her then. And so you know, I know her for a long time. She's a very talented, capable person. And um, I, I, I think that her initial um, out-of-the-gate performance validates my view that she's going to serve as a great governor. So I, I, all of the same things that you said about Tish James, I, I agree with. But that doesn't negate the fact that I think Kathy Hochul's doing a terrific job. Do you think Kathy Hochul is inspirational? You know, I look, Tish James, you know, speaks, and, and I believe that uh, she raises the excitement in a room, there's no question. And Kathy Hochul, if you listen to the substance of what she says, if you go to what it is that she believes in and is trying to do, her empathy, her care for people and their problems. And I know that um, Tish James is on a, um, on a tour right now, appropriately so, uh, uh, focusing on the opioid crisis. And I give her lots of credit on the money she's bringing to local communities from her efforts uh, to fight the, the opioid uh, crisis through the uh, big pharma. But I would say to you, Kathy Hochul has spoken to that in her own family's experience with the opioid crisis and her view as to what needs to get done. I think she's inspirational in what she produces and what she does. And yes, I, I think that she articulates that very well. Okay. With Democratic supermajorities in the legislature, the health committee chair, I've known him for a thousand years, and he's been on this program many times, Dick Gottfried, said they now have the votes to pass universal health care in New York. Should they? Well, I think they have to look at how they're going to pay for it and who's going to pay for it and what the um, implications are going to be economically. Um, uh, in the aggregate, and if it can be done, and if you can pay for it in a way that won't upend, you know, New York's uh, tax base, then I, I think it's certainly worth consideration. Let's face it; I believe that nationally we should have universal health care. I think that nationally you should have a situation where everybody can afford uh, to have good quality health care. Nobody should be excluded from that. New York State doing it on its own. Uh, is a good goal. I hope that you know we can get to uh, get to that point. I I just am uh, interested in seeing how it's going to be paid for, by whom, and what the unintended consequences of that might be. And and if they're not significant, uh, then you know it, it's it's a good idea. Gottfried also talked to me in a recent program on this on the show about sex workers, and maybe it's time to take a w look. Uh, at the potential decriminalization of sex workers. What do you think about that? I think before we get into decriminalizing sex work in New York State, we, we have to have a larger conversation and education with the greater voters across the state. I think uh, lots of people uh, favor that. Um, there are other people in rural New York, suburban New York, that are, are fearful of it and, and may not understand what it is that advocates are um, are looking at that there is this uh, this issue uh, of, of you know personal freedoms, but also you know how how women are abused, and it's a complicated issue. We come up with an idea that it is well motivated, you know, a good heart to it, but we don't explain it and take the time to educate voters so we bring them along. When you, when you throw something at them and force the force it on them. Uh, then, of course, all you're doing is creating uh, another um, arguing point uh, for the Republicans to defeat moderate Democrats that you need in order to get and maintain your majority. So we have to be careful. It's not that I oppose it. I just think we have to discuss it, educate people, and understand it before we decide to vote on it. Okay, I have no more time. I have two minutes, but I want to ask you about five more questions, and I only have time for one. So let's take abortion in New York. This is a disgrace, what's happened with the Supreme Court of the United States. I think you and I agree with that. New York has to be, in many ways, a bastion of permitting abortion. Now, there's a very good chance, I think, that the Supreme Court of the United States is going to go against Roe v. Wade and try to do away with abortion altogether. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm fearful of that. I, I am. I'm, I'm very fearful of that. Th this court, I don't have much confidence in. And I think that's going to 
uh, end up harming the court itself. I, I think that, you know, you can overplay your hand in, in politics and in anything, business, you name it. And the Republicans and the far right are overplaying their hand with this. Uh, women make up a uh, majority of the voters in the United States. Uh, and, and I will tell you that um, you add to that um, men who are forward thinking. Uh, you've got just an overwhelming majority of people who believe in choice. And um, they make this move, boy, you're going to have an earthquake in politics, the likes of which we haven't seen in our lifetimes. And I think you're going to see a lot of Republicans thrown out of office, a court that will ultimately change in its composition. And I I think that it'll be monumental. So uh, I would caution those members of the court just in terms of politics. I'm not talking in any other way, but in terms of the politics of it, be careful do not overplay your cards. Uh, you, you will end up the loser in the long term. Jay Jacobs, is New York doing ever enough on climate change? Well, we can always do more. Everybody has to do more. And, and not just the state, individuals. If you can put a solar system in your, in your house, you should do it. We're looking at it. I'm looking at it for my business. Everybody has got to do a part. It's not just the state. We all own a piece of this. We're all a piece of this larger world of ours, and we've got to help out. So look around, see what you can do to conserve and get off carbon uh, fuels and, uh, and uh, make the planet a better, better place. Everybody should do it. Jay Jacobs, I so appreciate your being with us, and I hope you'll come back again real soon because I want to talk about things like criminal justice and so many other things. So I do appreciate your being with us, and I so respect your ability to say what you think. And thank you very much. Well, thanks for having me. I always come back. Always enjoy your show. Thank you.